Hey folks, it's Nate. You might remember me. I'm the guy that works out in his garage and builds stuff for this LJ and tries to share it with you guys. I've been on a bit of a hiatus and I'm sorry about that. Well, I'm not sorry about that. We've had some family things going on. They've kind of taken precedence over the YouTube stuff. We'll talk about that in some other video. What I have not been doing is sitting around doing nothing though. I want to tell you today about something I've been working on for about a year and a half at this point to try to get myself set up for the next level in the LJ. That's right, today we're going to talk about purchasing a tow rig and a trailer for your Jeep or whatever it is that you want to tow. So stay tuned if you want to hear about some of the pitfalls I ran into, some of the decisions I had to make in order to buy both a tow rig and a trailer. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to take just a few minutes here in the garage, and then we're going to go outside, and I'm going to show you what I bought, and I'm going to show you why I bought what I bought, and we're going to give you maybe a quick uh, demo of towing. There's a couple things that you want to consider when you're looking for a tow rig. Now, number one, I want to tell you guys that this video is not specific to towing a Jeep. This is anything you want to tow, right? These, the same decision factors, the same, th the same questions you need to answer are going to come up if you want to tow an ATV, a utility trailer, a Jeep, a classic car, whatever, right? I hope that the points that I cover here will help anybody in any of those situations, okay? So the number one thing you need to think about before you rush out and buy yourself a tow rig and a trailer is what it is that you want to tow, okay? So if you're trying to tow an ATV, you're going to purchase an entirely different trailer. Maybe you don't even need a trailer. Maybe you can just buy a pickup truck, a small pickup truck at that, right? Maybe you can tow it behind your Jeep. Maybe you can tow it behind your car. Okay, there's no reason that you have to buy a pickup if you're only towing a couple hundred to a couple thousand pounds, right? So consider what you're going to tow. Now, I was lucky enough that the place I used to work, right down the street, there was an old uh, scrap place that was closed down, but for whatever reason, their scale was right next to the road and was left on. So I actually stopped and weighed the Jeep one day on my way home from work. And the Jeep weighs in at just over 4,000 pounds with me in it. So we're going to ballpark that it's about 4,000 4, pound rig. Yes, I've weighed it. People are going to argue about how much my LJ weighs. That's what it weighs. Stop. <laughs> it will get heavier as time goes on, and that's something I've tried to plan for when purchasing the rig and the trailer. So, uh, that's number one, right? If you're towing something light, you don't need to plan as big as if you're towing something big. If you're towing a freaking excavator around, you need an enormous truck, an enormous trailer. If you're towing a Jeep around, you need you know, a 4,000, 5,000 pound capacity trailer if you're going bare minimums. We're going to talk about bare minimums in a little minute. The next thing you're going to want to think about is uh, what vehicle will tow that and what works for you. Most people tow with a pickup truck. That's not the best for everybody, right? I've got a family. Uh, I could buy an SUV and a pickup, but why do I need two vehicles when I can serve that purpose with one? We have the JKU for carting the kids around and whatever to get them to school and soccer practice and whatever, but for long trips and things, maybe it's nice to have a nice vehicle. So when I started shopping for a tow rig, I was looking for things like Suburbans and Tahoes, right? And I'll show you what I ended up with in a little bit. Then you got to think about the trailer itself. Not just the capacity of the trailer, which is very important. The trailer I ended up with, I think, is a 7,000 pound capacity, even though, like I said, the Jeep is only four. Uh, but it's a double axle trailer, it's got brakes, and 7,000 pounds is adequate, more than adequate, to tow this or the JKU if we want to. Or really, if I've got a friend who's trying to move a car, if I've got a friend who's got a pickup that's broken down, we can load that onto the trailer and tow it. The other thing you have to think about is safety. I tried to err on the side of caution for a lot of things. When you buy a tow rig, you don't have to pay attention to just the capacity, towing capacity that is. You also need to pay attention to any caveats that go along with that tow capacity. In the case of mine, we bought a large SUV, which again, I'll show you in a minute, which is rated at almost, what is it, 7,900 pounds. Okay, that's more than enough to tow both the trailer and the Jeep, which by the way, don't forget about the trailer weight when you're thinking about tow capacity. You don't need a 4,000 pound tow capacity to tow a Jeep. If a Jeep's going to be on the trailer, you need at least a 6,000 because the trailer weighs another two, at least in my case, it weighs another two. The vehicle that I purchased, yes, it has almost an 8,000 pound tow capacity. But to tow above 5,000, 
they they don't just recommend, they say that you require a weight distribution hitch. So that's something to consider. That's another that's a lot more expensive than just a standard ball, right? And if they say you need it and you're not using it even though you think you don't need it, right? Because I had lots of people tell me don't bother with the weight distribution hitch. You don't need it. Uh, if you're not using it and the owner's manual and the hitch tell you you need it and you're in an accident, now you've got insurance problems. So consider that. Okay? All right. So without too much uh, ramble here in the garage where I'm just kind of talking at the camera, um, I just want to kind of hit on those points. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go outside. I'm going to show you a little bit about what I bought. We're going to go for a quick tow. I'm going to show you loading and unloading the Jeep. And just kind of give you some of the highlights and high points as to why I bought what I bought and how that might impact what you might want to buy. So, let's go. I ended up with an 18-foot beaver tail, dual-axle, trailer-braked trailer, and a weight distribution hitch. Now, there's a few things that you need to think about while you're deciding on exactly what trailer you want to get. What I found was minimum length for these things is like 14 to 16 feet. The rule of thumb that I heard was that an 18-foot trailer is generally safer to tow with for pretty much any Jeep. Now, why is that? Because the longer the trailer, the better it tows behind your tow vehicle. The less chance it's going to have that it's going to get into that death wobble thing that people see horror videos of on social media where somebody's little truck gets thrown off into a ditch because the trailer got out of control on the highway. The other reason is because the longer the trailer, the easier it's going to be to distribute the weight of your load over top of the axles. Now, you'll notice that when I loaded it onto the trailer, uh, the as I pulled up onto the trailer, it tilted way back and then leveled back out again. So between the weight distribution hitch and placement of my Jeep on the trailer, I get to level out the trailer to the best way possible. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the tow rig I bought. It's a Cadillac Escalade. Hang on, I know what you're thinking. Look at this rich ass YouTuber buying a Cadillac Escalade. Must be nice. Well, it's not. It's a 2008. And to be honest, I was looking for a Suburban or a Yukon, like a, what do they call them? A Yukon XL, the, the, the Suburban version of the XL. I've always been. Stupid bugs. I've always been a bit of a GM fan, but uh, GM doesn't make a great off-road vehicle, in my opinion, so uh, I turned into a Jeep guy. But when it came time to look for a tow rig, I immediately started looking at Chevy trucks and Chevy Suburbans. And given the family requirements that I have, we wanted to be able to take this thing on family trips and whatnot, and ride in comfort, we wanted a Suburban for all the room. There's a ton of room in this thing. And if you ask me, it's a little more versatile than a pickup. Sure. It might be harder to load a ton of lumber in the back, but to be honest, I just don't do that that often. I do do that, but I've got a trailer for that now. Anyway, it's a 2008. It had a few issues when we got it. It still has some issues today, and in fact, on my first tow, it had to be towed home. <laughs> so, you get what you pay for, right? I could have went with a brand new something or other, paid twice as much. We decided we were in a situation where we needed a vehicle that could cart around our sick mother-in-law, well, my sick mother-in-law, my wife's mother, uh, who is fighting cancer, unfortunately. Um, and this fit that bill a lot better than our two Jeeps did. On top of that, we had a family vacation coming up last year that we really wanted a nice over-the-road vehicle to take for said vacation. And, uh, well, it all just lined up. So we found ourselves a used with just under, I think it was, 100k miles on it when we got it, Cadillac Escalade. Why did we get a Cadillac Escalade instead of a Suburban? You hear that? That's why we got a Cadillac Escalade instead of a Suburban. So the Cadillac Escalade comes with the GM 6.2 liter. It's not an LS, it's an L, was it an L92 or an L95? L92, I think it is. So the thing will tow, as I mentioned inside, almost 8,000 pounds, whereas the Suburban caps out at like 7,250, if I remember correctly, which also would have been adequate. But I tell you what, when it's running right, this thing tows like a dream. So speaking of towing, you can see behind me, I've already got the Jeep on there. Let's take this thing out for a drive. 
Now, what the heck is a beaver tail? Well, that's that downward slant on the rear of the trailer. And the reason I went with a beaver tail was because if you get a plain old flat trailer with ramps on the back, then vehicles that are, have lower ground clearance are gonna have trouble getting onto the trailer. Now, that may not matter if you're towing a Jeep or a pickup or even most cars, right? But if you ever want to tow something that has lower ground clearance, then get a beaver tail, simple as that, because it, it helps with that breakover angle on the rear of the trailer. Now, you might say, I don't care, I'm never gonna tow a car. Then go ahead, save yourself a couple hundred bucks and buy yourself a trailer without a beaver tail. The price difference when I bought mine was about $300. To be honest, it just wasn't that much money. So I bought it with the beaver tail. Now I mentioned a weight distribution hitch. What a weight distribution hitch does is it takes the weight on the tongue of the trailer and distributes it into the frame of your vehicle. Now there's these funny little bars or arms that come off of the trailer hitch and go back to the tongue of the trailer to get this done. Uh, if you buy a weight distribution hitch and you buy a trailer, you're going to have to set up the weight distribution hitch unless you pay the folks you bought the trailer from to do it for you. The idea is that you need to get these bars sort of loaded with the weight of the trailer. Another thing you absolutely have to think about is trailer brakes. So your trailer will probably, because it's required by law at this capacity, have electric trailer brakes. And you're gonna want them anyway. However, not all vehicles are set up to handle electric trailer brakes right out of the box. Some of them are, some of them are not. The Cadillac Escalade has, a, has the proper connection for trailer brakes and trailer lights, but the trailer brake controller is absent. For whatever reason, they wired it ready to go, just like a Suburban might have. If you order it with a tow package, it'll have trailer lights, but it will not have brakes, a brake controller that is. So you have to buy a trailer brake controller. I bought the Prodigy P2 because it came very highly recommended. There's lots of other options out there for trailer brake controllers, but it is something you're gonna have to consider. If you're buying a tow rig, look for something that already has a controller or purchase an aftermarket one. And then there's another couple sort of random things that maybe you're not thinking about when you're thinking about the value of having a trailer. And these are things that are going to get you, going to be annoying, going to be things you're going to have to figure out and things that I've had to figure out since I bought the trailer and leading up to buying the trailer. First of all, trailers are big. Figure out a place to store it. If you don't have a property large enough to store a trailer, find a you store it place or find a relative that will be kind enough to store it on their property. Insurance. Think about insurance. Uh, every state may be a little different on this. Here in PA where I live, I contacted my insurance company to find out what I need to cover the trailer. And they said that my policy will cover the trailer underneath the liability insurance on the vehicle towing it. And that's just for liability. If I back into someone else's car, for example, my insurance will cover the cost of their car, but not the cost of my trailer. If my trailer is sitting on the side of the road or, you know, parked wherever I store it and it gets stolen, it's not covered by that because it wasn't attached to a vehicle when it happened. So these are things to consider. On top of insurance, there's also registration to consider. When I purchased the trailer, it included a year registration. So I'm going to have to renew this like I do my vehicles every year. Some people play games with registering their trailers in other states that have more forgiving laws when it comes to renewals and inspections, which is another thing I have to deal with here in PA. Just like a vehicle, I have to have the trailer inspected once a year along with the registration. So that's something else uh, you, you might want to think about. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you think I got anything wrong, or if you have any comments, feel free to throw them in the comments below or contact me on the social medias. If you want to join the SWB Crawler community, go to swbcrawler.com slash community. It'll take you right over to a Discord instance that I had set up so that we can chat about Jeeps and all kinds of other things. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this sort of content, then uh, subscribe. I'm certainly going to continue sharing my experiences with trailering and towing as time goes on. And I've got plenty of other off-road and Jeep content in there if you're interested in that kind of thing. And I think that's about it, folks. Thanks for watching. And remember, get out there and wheel.